Hey guys. So, what is today? I don't even know what today is. Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. Um, don't even ask me today because I have no freaking clue. But, uh, yeah, this stayed fantastic. Um, a matter of fact, everything I've done up to this point, I'm mad at at this point because that turned out so good. Um, and I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying it just it's just the way it is. It just turned out good. Um, obviously, this wouldn't work for, you know, the newer cars because that turned out flat. And that's what I wanted for this, which most of the time it does and it, sh it turns out with some peel. But I hammered this on and it laid down like glass, which, man, I love it. But, again, I got some runs, not on any of this stuff necessarily, but inside there. Um, and probably because this is laying flat, it's probably harder to run something that's laid flat than it is if you were hanging it up like that. And obviously that being a vertical surface. Uh, here, let me... Because I'm going to have to work these out. I was probably going to do that now. I'm going to give me a razor blade and start playing. Uh, oh, I was going to show you this little guy here. I, I bought a little package of these. And um, let's see, they're called Clever Cutters. And so if you guys ever cut this plastic and stuff, it's kind of a pain in the ass. I mean, obviously with a regular razor blade, you can do it. But when you're doing it, you're trying to keep from cutting through your, your tape and all that kind of stuff. Well, these, you know, got the little safety edge, so you just pop them in. You cut your... You know, hit the tape there, but there you go. You just cut it out like that, and uh, you don't have any. You just you don't have to worry about it hitting your your paint and stuff like that. You know, when you're cutting down. Anyway, something I picked up off of eBay, and uh, so I thought I'd share that with you. Um. I got that cut open. We can take a better look at this in here. So yeah, this stuff just um I'm amazed it, it turned out like that. Um you can see there maybe it's a little sag. And then I got a run right there, which is really literally no big deal. Um but the seat back even will cover probably cover most of that but I'm going to go ahead and rub that out anyway um, so yeah there you go so yeah uh, let me go ahead and work on that little dot over there I'm going to take a razor blade to it I'll probably take you along with that you guys have seen me do it but I I had questions on how I was going to go about that, so um, I'll show you. So I'll bring you back. Alright, so take your regular razor blade like this. Take it and bend it just a little bit, okay? Like that. What that does is it kicks these edges up to where it doesn't dig into your surrounding clear you don't want it to hit anything but what you want it to hit and you want it to hit right in here and that's it you don't want this digging you could probably grind those off too if you wanted I'm not going to do that but I've never seen anyone do that but I'm, that's you know something that's probably something you could do alright I'll get this shit up here also it's always good to stick the razor blade in your mouth like I have it right now um, you know, that's what you do with razor blades, right? You just you pop them in your mouth. That's, that's what I was always taught to do. I wonder if that light is going to make it too bright to where it doesn't show. Hey, you might be able to see that. I'll try to get that to zoom down in on that. Let's see. Yeah, you can see that. And let's do the background defocus. Oh, let me bring it back on the background defocus. Hold on a second. Alright. 
I was thinking about a video, Farm Boy was talking about uh, making a blooper video. And man, let me tell you what, if I'd have thought about keeping my blooper videos, you guys would have freaking died laughing because I do some dumb shit sometimes. Uh, man, that's hard to see on that black. Yeah, uh, and it actually laid down pretty, pretty flat, so I'm gonna have to be real freaking careful here. Dang. But that's gonna be tricky because it blended in big time. There we go. Try to stay off the surrounding. You know, that's low enough I could probably just got away with just taking a little bit of paper and sanding that down. Just knocking the top off of this. I'll take it down to where it's close. I'm not trying to... You can see all the little pieces of clear that aren't really wanting to blow off. Uh, trying to get that clear to kind of just peel up a little bit. But can you see how both the edges are kind of sticking up? They're not, I'm not digging down in there. This works better for a big run. This is obviously just a little drip that I dropped in there, you know. So, uh, and my little uh, three inch pads came in. I'm pretty excited about that, so I'll be able to use that on this right here. All right, we probably ought to call that good because that's getting pretty damn close and I'm actually starting to touch. So, yeah, I'll get me a, a piece of thousand grit. I'll just run over that real good with a piece of thousand grit and get it knocked out to the same level as the rest of it. So uh, let me pause the camera and get a piece of thousand grit and I'll come back. All right, guys, I'm gonna try this little cork deal. Just wrap a piece of thousand grit around it. What I'm gonna try to do is just keep it, you know, pretty much right on that little edge and kind of, kind of work it, you know. Uh, don't know how well this will work. I've never tried this with this so this seemed like a kind of a good little small block and it it's not going to hit a lot of area and that's what I want it's just it to pretty much stay on this one little area here also don't want to dig it dig a hole so that's important I also need to go grab my rag Let me grab something real quick and bring it back. Okay. You see there? It's starting to go away. A little tiny circle there. Too crazy. Yeah, sear starting to disappear. I don't know if you can even see that at this point. Still just a little, a little bit on there. And actually, now you can't see it. It just disappeared. So from here, 1,000. Now I can go ahead and jump up to uh, 1,500. Knock this little area. Then jump up to 2,000. Hit this little area, and then. So, and then we can go to polishing it and polish this right out of there and it just disappear. So, uh, I'll take you through it. I'll, I'm going to pause you a couple times. i got to get some more paper, so I'll be right back. Alright, so here i got 1500 grit. A little bit of soapy water. 
Uh, I think the soap's pretty well going out of the water at this point. Just kind of blending that in real good. Just trying to take those thousand grit scratches out of there. At this point, I could probably go to a soft pad and be better than this. I probably will, for a fact, on the 2000 grit. I'm going to go ahead and go up to 2000 grit now. bigger surface area there. I don't know that it's necessary to go in a crisscross pattern. I just I make a habit of it because that's what I do, you know, I've always been taught, but I think you could probably at this find a level you could take it back and forth and probably be just just fine. Um, but again I just you know you start a habit and you just you know if it works you stick with it type deal. Alright so that there should uh, buff out and I'm going to grab my buffer and uh, let's try this little dude out. I, I'll, I'll bring you back when I get it. Alright guys, uh, never used this before so I'm going to take it real easy and uh, we'll see how she works out. I notice also I'm going to spin while I'm doing this. I'm spinning off this edge. I'm not going to spin into this edge. It'll burn through. So you'll notice that my pad will be spinning this direction. And I won't be cutting into here. I'll be spinning off this side. And I better tape this too. So let me grab some tape real quick. Make sure you wipe that grit off from the earlier. I probably took that out a little farther than I needed to. I probably could have stayed to a smaller spot, but I didn't. So, this gives me a little bit more buffing to do. Yeah, and see, at this point you can't really see it. It's until you start glossing it, that's when the little bump starts kind of showing up again. But I think I should have got it all that time. It looks like this little buffer is going to work out fine. I'm trying to regulate the speed a little bit because, uh, as you can see, 
I'm just using it on a DeWalt uh, air drill. And I know these only spin to like 2,000, you know, RPMs, but I'm trying not to get crazy with it, so. I'm going to put my hearing protection back on because it's really loud. Alright, there you go. Now that's just compound. That's not, I've rubbed that out to, uh, to polishing and then actually swirl remover. So that's just literally the first step. So, let me take you off this tripod real quick. And because, and why I'm saying this is because literally it's already gone. Um, and my light's not. Here, let me back this out. Hopefully. Yeah. You can see it's, it's literally... And I gotta run back over it with some polish, polishing compound, maybe a little bit more to get the haziness out. But that kind of gives you an idea. That little doodad's gone. And that'll be the same way with with the run, so I mean you do it the exact the exact same way. So hopefully that's focusing in where it needs to. I cannot physically see really it was somewhere right in here and it's really hard to see. So I can live with that. Like I said I'll just uh I was gonna show you this so Here's, here's your little polishing deal. It comes with a quarter inch arbor so you can stick it in, you know, your, your air drill or whatever. You don't want to spin those too fast though. Uh, I think 1400 and 2000 is recommended on polishing. And it comes with these and it's, so this is the most coarse and that's a little bit more, a little less coarse. And then it comes into even less coarse, more fine, more fine, however you want to look at it. And then the uh, black is the actual swirl removing pad according to what they what you know this little kit comes with and I paid 25 bucks for this uh, I bought it on eBay I think but the place that came from was like T TCP tools or TPC tools or something like that anyway yeah I hope that uh, you know you guys got something out of that let me grab my sun gun real quick. This video is going to be longer than I wanted it to be, but hopefully somebody will kind of get an idea off of this, how, how you can make those little areas go away. Uh, when you get a fish eye or something, you're thinking, oh no, my paint's ruined, I'm not, you know. Uh, yeah, literally, it, it goes away. Now, that's, now with under the sun gun, you can see there's a difference it needs to be polished out a little better and you can see even there while well, I wiped it with the blue rag it's got some swirly stuff on it so even those Scott towels are got a little or coarse you know you really need to use one of the terry cloth or not terry cloth but the microfiber but anyway that'll all polish right on out and be beautiful look just like the rest of everything else I've got one uh, back here that I filled Yeah, right there. I talked to you about that one. I still got to scrape it down and clean it up and it'll go away. And you can see, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm floored that that came out like that. Um, especially me being a rookie, you know. So, if I can do it, you guys can do it. And, uh. You know, it just takes a little bit of patience, I guess, and and uh, don't get in a hurry. And don't dig too deep with that razor blade, because if you do that, you will be repainting it.
so yep all right guys that's gonna be it and I uh, appreciate you guys watching and subscribing and uh, hope that helps somebody and that'll be it for tonight because it's uh, almost yeah, it is nine o'clock so I'm gonna shut her down I thought I'd make a quick video on how to take the little dot out there I had some questions about that so there you go see you guys